Welcome to this quick tutorial on getting started with structural trends. This follows on from further guides and videos available on the Sequent website and YouTube channel, including our recent blog post released on June 3rd. Structural trends are similar to global trends in that they both allow for changes in direction of continuity over a surface. Structural trends, however, go one step further by allowing the user more flexibility on controlling the strength and direction of the trend at different points in space. It's not often that mineralization or geological units behave in a consistent planar fashion, in which case applying a structural trend can be a great tool in helping to reflect this complexity. A structural trend can be built using any number of meshes representing different trend directions. They can be planar or curved. They can be imported into LeapFrog or created using just about any combination of data types. For example, polylines, points, GIS lines, structural observations, etc. Currently in my 3D scene, is my original surface without any preferred orientation defined, and it's looking pretty unrealistic to what I know of the mineralization. By defining the different trend directions and ensuring that they are available in my meshes folder, I can start by right clicking structural trends, new structural trend. Under the trend type drop down list, there are three options available to us strongest long inputs, blending, and non decaying. I'll start with non decaying, which assumes that the strength of the trend doesn't decay away from the mesh. Click Add to select the mesh or meshes required. And for now, I'll leave the default strength as they are. We can see a visual representation of these parameters by viewing the structural trend object in the scene. Applying the default strength five, for instance, has created an oblate spheroid that is five times wider than it is thick. Of course, this can be adjusted as applicable. Using a non-decaying structural trend is useful in defining a more or less constant trend that has influence across your entire model. Let's go back to the structural trends object, double click, and this time around, I'm gonna select my trend type as strongest along inputs. Strongest along inputs allows you to create multiple trends that decrease in strength away from the mesh to a certain range. After the set range, there will be no effect from the trend. In this example, I will change the range to 100 and leave the default strength parameter as five. Leapfrog will reprocess, and we can visualize the outcome. Using a strongest along input trend is useful in defining a strong localized geological trend that essentially fades away from that point in space. Let's go back once again by double clicking our structural trend object, and this time selecting blending from our trend type. Blending will allow you to build a trend from multiple meshes, where you can specify a range and strength for each. Where trends intersect, LeapFrog will work out a combined trend so this is a useful structural type where two or more trends merge and you want to see a smooth transition. Once you are happy with your structural trend and you want to apply it, then we can do so either to intrusion contact surfaces in the geological model, as well as gray shells in a numerical model. In this example, I'm going to apply my blended trend to my mineralized intrusion surface. Double click your surface under surface chronology to bring up the edit dialog. Go to the surfacing tab and click additional options to enable further options for editing a surface. 
from trend, select structural trend. And when you click OK, Leapfrog Geo will warn us that it cannot use a linear interpolant with a structural trend. By clicking OK, we are taken to the interpolant tab where we can select spheroidal instead. By clicking OK, Leapfrog will regenerate. And we can look at the outcome. We can compare our regenerated surface with what we had originally. And it's looking much better than where we started. Thank you very much for watching this quick video. If you have any questions on this tutorial, then please feel free to reach out to the Sequence support team using email support at sequent.com.